The Second Coming of Jesus Christ Perspective, Hopes and Expectations Introductory Perspective to the Sacred Event Thus saith the Lord In the beginning of time, the world was without love. The first men were far from feeling or understanding that divine force, that essence of the spirit, the principle of all creation. They believed in God, but attributed to him only strength and the power of justice. They believed they understood the divine language through the elements of nature, so that when they saw them peaceful and serene, they believed the Lord to be pleased with the works of men. But when the elements were unleashed, they believed they saw in them the manifested anger of God. In the heart of man, an image had formed of a terrible God, capable of anger and the desire for revenge so that when they believed they had offended him, they offered holocausts and sacrifices in the hope of placating him. I tell you that those offerings were not inspired by their love of God, but the fear of a divine justice and fear of punishment were what inspired those first people to offer tribute to their Lord. The Divine Spirit they called only God, never Father or Teacher. It was the patriarchs and the first prophets who began to make men understand that God was justice, yes, but the perfect justice. That He was, first of all, Father, and that as Father, He loved all His creatures. Step by step, Walking slowly on the path of spiritual evolution, humanity continued its pilgrimage, passing from one era to another and learning a bit more of the divine arcane through revelations that God gave His children in every era. Still, man did not arrive at a complete understanding of the divine love, for he did not truly love God as a father nor did he feel in his heart the love his Lord gave him at every step. It was necessary for the perfect love to be made man, that the Word be made flesh and be transfigured to a form visible and tangible to men, for them to finally know how and how much God loved them. Not everyone recognized the presence of the Father in Jesus. How could they recognize Him if Jesus was humble, compassionate, and loving even with those who offended Him? They saw God as strong and proud before His enemies, harsh and terrible with those who offended Him. But just as many denied, Many also believed those words that penetrated to the most hidden reaches of the heart. That way of healing incurable ills and illnesses with a mere caress, a look of infinite compassion and a word of hope. And in that teaching that was the promise of a new world, a life of light and justice that could not be erased from the many hearts of those who understood the divine man to be the truth of the Father, the divine love of he who men did not know and therefore could not love. The seed of that supreme truth was planted in the heart of humanity for all time. Christ was the planter, and He is still raising that seed. Later He shall come for the harvest and enjoy it for all eternity. He shall not have to say again, I hunger or I thirst, for finally, his children will love him the way he has loved them since the beginning. Who is it that speaks to you of Christ, disciples? It is he. 
It is I, the Word, who speaks to you again, humanity. Recognize me. Do not doubt my presence because of the humble form of my presentation. Ostentation can be no part of me. Remember me in my passage through the world in those times. Remember that I died as humbly as I had been born and lived. Hopes and Expectations After my departure in the Second Era, from generation to generation, my arrival was awaited by those who kept faith in me. From father and mother to son and daughter, the divine promise and my word were kept alive in the desire of beholding my return. Each generation believed itself to be the fortunate one, hoping that, in their time, the promise of the Lord would be redeemed. And so, time passed, and so did the generations, and my promise was becoming more and more forgotten from the hearts of men, as prayer and vigil were erased. The world is subjected to trials. The nations feel all the weight of my justice that falls upon them. And my light, my voice calling to you, is felt throughout humanity. Men feel my presence, shall perceive the universal ray of light that descends and rests upon them. They foresee me without knowledge of this work, the revelations in Mexico, without having heard my word, they raised me in their spirit to ask me, Lord, in what era shall we meet? These trials and bitterness which have come to mankind, what do they mean? Can it be that you do not hear the clamor of this world? You said that you would return. When, O oh Lord, will you come? And in each sect and religion, the spirit of my children raises and they seek me, invoke me, ask me, and await me. Men interrogate me, and they say to me, Father, if you exist, why do you not manifest yourself among us, since in other times you have descended to our mansion? Why do you not come now? Is our iniquity today so great that it prevents you from coming to save us? You always sought the lost, the blind, the leper, of which the world is full today. By chance, are we no longer inspired by your compassion? You said to your apostles that you would return among men, and that you would give signs of your arrival, which we believe we are contemplating. Why do you not show your holy face? Behold men waiting for me without being aware that I am among them. I am before their eyes, and they do not see me. I speak to them and they do not hear my voice. And when, for an instant, they have a glimpse of me, they deny me. But I continue giving testimony of myself, and I keep on waiting for those who have been waiting for me. And in truth, the signs of my manifestation during this era have been great. The same blood of men shed in torrents, saturating the earth, has marked the period of my presence among you as the Holy Spirit. No one should be surprised at my presence, since through Jesus I made known to you the events that would announce my manifestation as the Spirit of Truth. I also told you that my arrival would be in spirit, so that no one would be waiting for material manifestations that shall never come. Look upon the Jewish people still awaiting the Messiah, who had not come in the form that they expected, because the True One was already among them, and they did not recognize Him. Do you wish, humanity, not to recognize my new manifestation 
in order to continue waiting for me according to your belief and not according to that which I promised you? Let the world not await a new messiah. If I promised you that I would return, I also made it known that my coming would be spiritual. But humanity has never known how to prepare itself to receive me. In those times, men doubted that God could be hidden in Jesus, whom they judged to be a man like other men, and as poor as other men. Nonetheless, later and before the powerful works of Christ, humanity became convinced that in that man who was born, grew and died in the world, was the word of God. And yet in this time, many men will only accept my coming if it is in human form, as in the second era. The evidence that I come in spirit to communicate with humanity will not be accepted by all, in spite of the testimonies, because materialism will act as a blindfold of darkness for the eyes of some. How many would like to see Christ suffer again in this world and receive from him the miracle, so that they could believe in his presence or his existence? But truly, I tell you, on this earth there will not again be a manger to see me born as man, nor another Golgotha to see me die. Now all those who are resuscitated into true life shall feel my birth in their hearts, just as those who remain in sin shall feel me die. See that many people of this time scrutinize the scriptures of past times, meditating on the prophets and trying to penetrate in the promises made by Christ to return. Listen to how they say, The Master is near, the Lord is here, or He shall soon arrive, and then add, The signs of His return are clear and palpable. Some seek me and call me, others feel my presence, and still others foresee my coming in the Spirit. Oh, if only that thirst for knowing was present in all, and if all had that longing to find the supreme truth. See how in all religions and sects men scrutinize the time, life and events with the hope of discovering the signs that announce my coming. They are the innocent who do not know that for some time I have been manifesting myself and that I am about to end this form of communication. But I tell you also that many of those who are so anxiously waiting for me if they witnessed the form in which I have come to communicate, would not only not recognize me, but would flatly deny me. To them, only the testimonies will come, and by these means they shall believe that I was among my children. You also waited for me intimately with impatience, but I knew that you would recognize me and that you would be my laborers in this era.